Suppose you had a phone plan that cost $3 a month, plus it was going to cost 25 cents per minute, up to 100 minutes. And then the phone plan was going to change, and the cost would be $18 a month and 10 cents per minute. So you might illustrate this with a piece, something called a piecewise function. And so for this particular um, function, it would be here's the 0.25x, this represents 25 cents a minute, plus $3, so it's going to cost the $3 no matter what, and that's going to be the function we would use if x is less than or equal to 100 minutes, but then if you go over 100 minutes, it's only 10 cents a minute, plus it would cost the $18 a month. So if you were to graph this, you would end up with a picture that looks something like this. So here is my first line that was represented the 25 cents per minute. So notice how the line is steeper. And then the 10 cents per minute, the slope of that would be smaller. So notice how the line is not as steep. And we end up, when you graph this, they both are lines, but they're two pieces. And so that's why this is called a piecewise function. Now here's an example of another piecewise function that I used um, when our school district went to um, high deductible health plans quite a few years ago, I had a choice to make, either to use the high deductible health plan or the medium deductible health plan. So I wrote a piecewise function, and you'll see the red line represents, this was the medium deductible plan, and you can see there's three pieces. And then the high deductible plan had two pieces of that graph. So it just gives you this, um, you know, a visual. So I could see that the high deductible plan was better in almost all cases, and that's actually what I went with. So that's an example how a piecewise function can actually be useful. So what I'm going to have you guys do is, obviously we're not going to do one as complicated as that last one, but we're going to look at um, a piecewise function and how you would graph that. So I have two pieces for this one, f of x, which I can think of like y. So this is like having y equals 2x plus 3, and that's going to be true if x is less than or equal to 1. And then I also have f of x, or y, equals 5 if x is greater than 1. So think about what these are going to look like. I know that y equals 2x plus 3 is a line with a positive slope. I also know that y equals 5 is a horizontal line. So I know that my two graphs, my pieces, are going to look something like that. So I'm going to graph this. Now, first of all, I'm going to, um, well, I'm going to do these at the end. So one thing that I would recommend is that you look at what this value is, this value of 1. And I'm going to draw a vertical line at x equals 1. And I'm going to think of this kind of like a wall. And this piece has to stay on the left side of the wall. And this piece has to stay on the right side of the wall. So I'm going to make a table of values. So we're going to have x and f of x. And I'm going to have my, since I have two pieces, I'm going to have um, this in two pieces as well. Now I'm going to actually put the 1 in both pieces. And then for my first piece, I want to pick something less than 1. So I can pick 0 if I want to. I can pick a negative number. I'm just going to pick 0. And then for my second piece, I need something bigger than 1. So I'm going to pick a 2. Now I'm going to plug those values in. So if I plug a 0 into my first piece, then I'm going to get 2 times 0 plus 3. So I get 3. And if I plug a 1 in, I get 2 times 1 plus 3. So I get 5. Now I'm also going to plug a 1 into this piece, which there's nothing really to plug into because it's a horizontal line. So I get 5, and there's no place to put the 2 because we're just going to get a 5 because y is always 5. Now you might ask, well, how come you plugged a 1 into this bottom piece because this is when it's only greater than? Well, when we mark these, we're actually going to mark this one with an open circle, and we're going to fill this one in with a solid dot because we need to show that the value of x can be really, really close to 1 as long as it's bigger. So I could plug in a 1.0000001, um, but it would be hard to show the accuracy of that graph. So by, by using an open circle, we're saying that we can get really close to 1 for this piece, but we can't have it be exactly equal to 1. However, with this other one, um, I'm going to fill in that circle because that's where the equal to part is. So when I plot these points, I'm going to plot 0, 3, and I'm going to plot 1, 5, and that one's filled in. And now I'm going to connect those dots, and remember, this piece cannot cross, cross this wall, 
So when I do this, I end up with a graph that looks like that, but it stops here. Then 1, 5, which is already plotted. Now notice it would be an open circle, but it's already filled in by the other, um, by the other function. And then 2, 5, and I need to connect those. And there's my graph. So this is the graph of the piecewise function. The other thing I'm going to ask that you do is say what the domain and range is. Well, the domain is going to be all real numbers because it's everything less than or equal to 1 and everything bigger than 1. So our domain is all real numbers. Remember an interval notation, that's negative infinity to infinity. The range you might have to think about a little bit more. Notice that nothing is higher than 5. It can be equal to 5, but it can't be greater than 5. However, it's everything less than 5. So y is less than or equal to 5. And an interval notation, that would be from negative infinity to 5. I don't know why I'm writing on a slant, but I am. Okay, now up here with these problems, when I ask you to evaluate for particular values, you have to pay attention to the domain. So when I ask you to evaluate f of negative 1, you have to look here first and say, which piece do I plug this into? Well, negative 1 is less than 1, so it goes into the first piece. So I'm going to do 2 times negative 1 plus 3, so I get negative 2 plus 3, which is 1. Then I'm asked f of 1. Well, it's exactly 1, so I look to the part where the equal to part is, so it plugs in. I substitute that in here, 2 times 1 plus 3, so I get 5. And then for the 3, I'm, that 3 is greater than 1, so I'm going to substitute it into this equation. No place to put it, it's just a constant, so I get 5. You don't plug them into both parts. You have to look and see which domain, That's you got to pay attention to the domain to see which function you're going to plug that into. Okay, so here's another example. Um, now we have f of x equals negative 3 if x is less than or equal to 2, or f of x is 2x plus 1 if x is greater than 2. So once again, um, we're going to think about what these pieces look like. This is like having y equals a constant, so I know I'm going to have a horizontal piece. This one is linear. It's positive. It's got a positive um, slope, so I know it's going to be going up. My, um, my wall, remember I'm thinking of it kind of as an imaginary wall, is going to be at the vertical line. Now this is not part of the graph, this is just to help me think about what's happening. So I'm going to make a table of values. And you know, you don't always have to make a table of values to plot it. This is just a tool to help, help you if you need to. Now when I do this, I always, you, I always place this number first. So I'm going to put a 2 in both parts. And then notice the equal to part is with my first piece. So this one's going to get filled in with a dot. This one's going to get an open circle because we don't really include the two. We just get really close to two. So I'm going to show that with an open circle when I plot that point. Something smaller than two, you can use one if you want. I'll use zero. And something larger than two, I'm going to use three. So now I would just plug the values in. So for these two values, it's a constant. So it's just going to be negative three. But for this one, if I substitute a 2 in, 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5. And here, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. And then I'm ready to plot those points. So I plot the point 0, negative 3. Move this up a little bit. And I plot the point, um, oh, that was, sorry, that was 2, negative 3. And now I'll plot 0, negative 3. And I'm going to connect those, but I have, to, I, can't, I have to stay on the left side, so it's going to go like this. And then I'm going to plot the point 2, 5 with an open circle, and the point 3, 7. Now sometimes people think that all the points over here have to be open circles, and they're not. Um, you're only going to have that open circle on this, on this dashed line. You won't have them anywhere else. And then I'm going to connect. Well, I didn't draw that very well, but that line's going to go that direction. So if I plug in some values, f of 0, 0 is less than 2, so it goes here, so I get negative 3. 
that's actually one of my values I used in my chart. Two, you have to plug it in where the equal to part is, so it's negative three. And three, actually we already did that one, so three I would be plugging into this one, and I get seven. Now, domain and range. Again, the domain is going to be all real numbers because it's everything less than or equal to 2 and everything greater than 2. So all real numbers, which in interval notation, negative infinity to infinity. Now the range is a little trickier because I have all these numbers that are greater than 5. I also have negative 3 on here. So I actually have to write this in two pieces because notice I have a gap. I don't have any y values. In between these two there are no y values. So I'm going to have um, a possibility, well let me do this first. This way we have y equals negative 3 or y is greater than 5. But I have to write that in two pieces because of this gap where there's no y values at all. If I were going to write this in interval notation, it would look like this. I'm including the negative 3. Or, and when we're writing it in interval notation, remember we use this symbol for um, union, the, the U for union. And we would have a 5. I'm not including the 5, so it's a parenthesis, comma, infinity. That would be interval notation. So what if you have three pieces? Well, we're going to just have three parts of our graph. So I know that this is going to be a horizontal line because it's a constant. I see I have a positive slope here, so I'm going to get something that goes like that. And I see I have a negative slope here, so I'm going to get something that goes like that. So we know what our pieces look like. Um, so what I'm going to do when I have these kind of vertical walls, so I'm going to have at negative 1, something is happening there. And then at a positive 2, so I'm going to draw a vertical line in there. So notice this piecewise function has three pieces. The first one's going to stay on the left side, then I'm going to have one in the middle, that's going to be the easy one, and then I'm going to have one here. So I'm going to make a chart, and this time I'm going to have three parts to my chart. Since they're linear, I only need two points to make a line though. Okay, so the negative one is going to get put in this chart and this part of the chart. And the positive 2 is going to get, get shared with this piece and this piece. So those I'm not making choices on. Those are going to be the values that go there. Then think about where the solid dots are going to be. So the equal to part is in that first piece. So that's going to be a solid dot. This is going to be an open circle. The 2 is in the second piece. So this is going to be a solid dot. This is going to be an open circle. Now I need something smaller than 1, I'm sorry, smaller than negative 1 to help me with the first piece. So I'm going to put a negative 2. And I need something bigger than 2 to help me with the last piece. So I'm actually going to put in a 4. You'll see why when we evaluate it. So now I'm ready to plug the values in. Um, because this is a constant, it doesn't matter what x is. It's what, what f of x is going to be 3. If I plug a negative 1 into this piece, I get 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And if I plug a 2 in, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. And if I plug a 2 in here, the 2's cancel. I get a negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. And if I plug a 4 in, um, the 2 and the 4 cancel, leaves me a 2. So I have negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4, which is why I picked a 4 and not a 3. I just didn't want to deal with 3 halves. I thought, hmm, I could avoid fractions if I pick an even number. So when I plot these, I'm going to plot the negative 2, 3, and the negative 1, 3. And I have to stay on the left side, so my line would have to go like this. Okay. Then I'm going to plug in, or sub plot the point, negative 1, negative 1, with an open circle, because there's my reminder to use an open circle. And the point 2, 5 filled in. And I connect the dots, which is why I said that one's the easy one, because um, you just join those two points. And then 2, negative 3 with an open circle. And 4, negative 4, move this up just a bit, would be here. Hold on a second. 
Okay, I had to create more room there. So then we have our line. that goes like this, because it has to stay on this side of our diagonal. Okay, so from here, this is my graph of my three pieces. So let's think about the domain. Well, notice how, hmm, all real numbers. The range is the part where we have to think more. And look at our graph. So notice there's nothing higher than five. It includes the five, but nothing higher than five. So I can see that as I move from five down, I have a gap between negative one and negative three. So I'm going to say it like this. I'm gonna say, um, we're talking about the y values. So I have y is less than negative three because of this negative three or, or down. So y is negative less than negative three or y can be in between negative one and five. So I'm gonna say it like this, negative one less than y, less than or equal to five. Now I don't have to say anything about the three because it's covered between negative one and five. If I were putting this in interval notation, I would have negative infinity to negative three with parentheses, union, negative one comma five with a bracket because I'm including the five. So I'm gonna finish this one up just by evaluating these, um, these, evaluating these um, functions here for f of negative two. I'm actually, I have the value already in here so I'm just gonna use that since I already have it. f of negative one, make sure you're plugging it into the one with the equal to part, so we had a three. f of two, Remember, you have to plug it into the part that includes the two, so I plug that in here, we get five. And f of four, which again, we already had this on our chart, so we see it's negative four. Okay, so that is, those are examples of piecewise functions.